Hello everyone, my name is Maroon and I'm going to present for you LINX, which is a joint work with Lina and my supervisor, Professor Mark Silberstein from the Technion Israel. This work focuses on how to build the fast and efficient accelerated network servers for data centers in order to enable direct networking from the accelerators in the system by offloading the data and control planes onto a smoking. In this talk, I will start by giving a brief background and motivation for this work then I will talk about the design, then I will show you some results and we'll finish with conclusions. Recently, there is a trend where more and more AI applications are being used. And as a response, major cloud providers have already deployed many accelerators in their data centers, which lead us to reconsider the design of accelerated network servers in order to run these applications in more efficient way. I will focus on three main components in the accelerated server, the CPU, the network interface card, and the accelerator. If we look at the traditional architecture, which we call the host-centric architecture, you will see that the CPU sits in the center and all the peripheral devices are connected to the CPU, which means that if one device needs to communicate with another device, it needs to do that through the CPU. Going back to our accelerated application, we've observed that most of the application specific logic is running on the accelerator. And offloading the full application to accelerators is very important because we want to eliminate the CPU interaction with the accelerators, such as the accelerator invocation and data transfers. And this could be done by using the state-of-the-art TVM optimization compiler for neural networks that compiles out the CPU code and does a lot of optimizations like kernel fusion in order to save data movements between the CPU and the accelerator. But doing only that is not sufficient in order to get rid of the CPU from the system. So why the CPU is still needed? In network servers, the CPU is used for two reasons. The first is to run the network processing. The CPU will receive requests from the network and send responses back to the client and also for managing the accelerator and transferring the data between the accelerator and the CPU. And here, we should know how many CPUs are needed in order to perform this simple task. And in order to answer this question, I will show you a real world example, the NVIDIA DGX1 server, which is the first server used for AI purpose. And in this server, there is eight Tesla GPU cards, but in order to derive these accelerators, they use 40 CPU Xeon cores, which is a lot. Therefore, we claim that using Xeon core as an accelerator manager is inefficient. And this is because when we start to add more and more accelerators to the system, the CPU will become the bottleneck, which means that we will need to add more CPU cores, which will cost us money and power consumption. And last, this architecture suffers from a high tail latency because the network server and the accelerator manager running on the CPU share the same resources with other applications running on the CPU, for example, the last level cache, which will lead to interference between these two. So for these kind of applications, we would rather to use the accelerator-centric architecture where the network server logic will be moved to the accelerator and the accelerator management is not needed anymore and the CPU will not be used in this architecture. And actually, a bunch of previous works have already tackled this problem and proposed this architecture, but all these works have three main limitations in common. The first is they all focus on GPU only, which means that if we want to use another type of accelerators, we need to redo all the research done on GPUs and to re-implement all the super optimized libraries for each type of accelerators, which is not practical. Therefore, in this work, we want to have a portable solution that supports all the, the accelerators. Second, all these work, works require InfiniBand connection between the clients and the server, which is not true for most of the workloads in the clouds, where UDP and TCP are used. So we want to have support for UDP and TCP protocols. And last, moving the network server logic to the accelerator causes an extra overhead on the accelerator. And in this work, we want to offload the server logic from the accelerator. So after studying these works and understanding their limitations, 
we defined our goal to demonstrate and build a general accelerated centric server. And we've done that inspired by a recent trend where programmable peripheral devices are being used, like SmartNICs. And our hypothesis is to use SmartNIC as a manager of the accelerators in the system. In our architecture, the CPU will not be used, and there will not be any application-specific code running on the SmartNIC. Now I'll move to the design. I will start with the challenges. So we want to have a generic accelerator support, not only for GPUs, but also for many other accelerators, for example, like the Intel Visual Computer Accelerator. But the question here, where we should put the drivers? since we don't have CPU in this system. The second challenge is that we want to have support for TCP and UDP transfer protocols. But again, where should we run the network stack processing? On the CPU, we don't have CPU. So we want to have a portable solution. But in order to achieve this goal, we need to establish a communication channels between the SmartNIC and the accelerator in an accelerator agnostic way. And one way to do that is by using the accelerator's DMA engine, by installing the driver, the accelerator's driver on the SmartNIC. But unfortunately, we don't have drivers for all the SmartNICs. And even if we had, we will need to have a huge number of drivers for each accelerator and every SmartNIC that we choose to implement links on, which is not practical. Second, we need to decide where the network processing will be running on the accelerator like previous works? The answer is no, because we saw in previous works that there is a problem with an extra overhead on the accelerator when the accelerator starts managing the NIC. So what we did is to use the accelerated RDMA engine integrated in the smart NIC. And in order to do that, we use the CPU in the init initialization stage in order to establish one-sided RDMA connection between the SmartNIC and the accelerator. From this point on, the CPU will not be used anymore. And now the SmartNIC will manage the work, will manage work used in the accelerator memory, access them via RDMA, and create a simple protocol of work requests and responses with the accelerators in order to allow them to send and receive data. And all this is done with no cost for the device because all these queues and the RDMA connection is managed by the SmartNIC. And this solution is also portable because we are not depending on the accelerator's driver anymore. We actually verified that the data transferring and accelerator managing using RDMA outperforms the existing transfer mechanisms used today in GPUs. For more details, you can read the paper. So this is how the system architecture looks like. On the right, we have the clients. On the left, the server. The clients can send UDP or TCP requests to the SmartNIC, where links will be running, and will dispatch these requests to the local accelerators using RDMA over PCI. So the RDMA is used internally in the server while exposing a general interface towards the client. Links can scale seamlessly to remote accelerators, thanks for using RDMA. So for remote accelerators, links can use RDMA via a regular RDMA NIC on the remote machine in order to access the remote accelerators in the same way it accesses a local accelerator. Now I will focus on, uh, on the server side, on the links design. In this diagram, you can see that we have N accelerators on the right, the SmartNIC on the left, which already has the network server uh, logic offloaded on it. We also have a message dispatcher, which is responsible for dispatching the different requests for different accelerators according to a predefined policy, for example, like load balancing or any other policy we choose. We also have a remote message queue manager, which is responsible for allocating message queues or the work queues on the accelerator side in the accelerator memory, and also for transfer, transferring the data using RDMA. And here we should take care of memory consistency. I will not go through this in the talk. 
For more details, please see, please see the paper. On the accelerator side, we need to implement a lightweight library in order to manage these message queues in the accelerator memory. And on the egress side, we have a message forwarder which shares context with the message dispatcher in order to send the responses back to the client. Now I will show you an animation. Let's say we have a new request. The message dispatcher will decide to which accelerator it should be transferred. The remote message queue manager transfers the data using RDMA to the accelerator memory. Now the accelerator in its free time will fetch the request from its local memory and start processing the request. In the meanwhile, a new request might arrive. The message dispatcher this time decides to send it to another accelerator and again, and again the accelerator will start processing this request. When the accelerators finish computation, they will write the result back to the same message queue in their local memory and the message forwarder will fetch the results from the accelerator memory and send it back to the client. Now I will move to the evaluation. We've implemented links on two different SmartNIC architectures on Bluefield, which is ARM-based SmartNIC and partial implementation on Innova, which is an FPGA-based SmartNIC. We also use two different types of accelerators, the NVIDIA GPU and the Intel Visual Computer Accelerator. We run multiple experiments in this talk, I will focus only on two applications, one running on GPU, the other inside SGX Enclave on the Intel VCA. For more results, please read the paper. I will start with LENET. LENET is a deep neural network model that used to recognize handwritten digits. LENET was developed using TensorFlow and optimized using the TVM compiler. There is no CPU code and no application-specific code running on the SmartNIC. Here you can see the throughput latency graph. On the right, the vertical line is the theoretical maximum throughput that LENET can achieve. And you can see the performance of the host-centric architecture on this graph. Now I will add LENET using links on Bluefield. And as you can see, when using links on Bluefield, the, we, can, we get 25% better throughput and 20% lower latency comparing to the host-centric architecture. And we almost achieve the maximum theoretical throughput. And all this with zero CPU utilization since the CPU is not used. Now, I will add LENET using links on Xeon Core. And as you can see, Comparing to Xeon Core, links on Bluefield can achieve the same throughput with a negligible latency overhead. In this experiment, we wanted to understand how links scales when adding more accelerators to the system. So we started with one server with SmartNIC where links will be running on and four GPUs. Then we added one remote server which has for GPUs and the regular RDMA NIC. Links will access the remote GPUs by using RDMA via the regular RDMA NIC in the remote machine. And we also added another machine with the same setup. And as you can see, for compute bound applications, LENET scales linearly even when having remote accelerators. And in order to understand what is the upper bound of links scalability, we run an emulation on one GPU where we run large number of threads. Each one of them emulates a single GPU running LENET. And for TCP connections, links can, scales, can scale up to 15 GPUs until it reaches the network processing bottleneck. And for UDP, links can scale up to 100 GPUs until it reaches the network processing bottleneck since UDP has less network processing comparing to TCP. So the takeaway from this experiment is that links scales linearly until reaching the network processing bottleneck. In the third experiment, we want to show how it is simple to integrate a new accelerator with links. And for this 
purpose, we chose the Intel VCA accelerator. And in order to integrate the VCA with links, we only needed to add 20 lines of code in order to implement the, white, the lightweight library on the VCA side. And then we ran a secure computing server inside FGX Enclave, which for each request decrypts an AES encrypted message, multiplies it by a constant, encrypts the result, and send it back to the client. So the SGX here guarantees that the encryption key is not accessible from the, from the server. And from this table, you can see that Lynx achieves much less latency comparing to the host-centric architecture. And as a takeaway from this experiment, you can see that integrating a new accelerator with Lynx is very simple. Now, we should ask ourselves the question, so why not using the SmartNIC as another CPU? So if offloading the network server can give us better performance, why not offloading the whole workload on the, on the SmartNIC? And in order to answer this question, I will show you an example. In this example, we have a server with six CPU cores, an accelerator, and SmartNIC. And let's say that we have two applications, Memcached and Lenet. And the question here is, what is the best mapping in order to get the best performance from this setup? So for Lenet, we, need, we know that it needs to be running on the accelerator. But if we use accelerator, we need to manage this accelerator. And as I showed you earlier, Lynx outperforms the host-centric architecture. Therefore, we will be using Lynx. But the question is, where should we run Lynx? On a CPU core, on Xeon core, or on the SmartNIC? Actually, for Lenet, it doesn't really matter where Lynx is running. Because as I showed you, Lynx on Xeon or Lynx on SmartNIC can achieve the same throughput with a negligible uh, latency for Lenet. So the real question here is, what should we do with the memcached? Should we run it on the CPU cores only, or should we, should we use the blue field in order to run also memcached while dedicating one of the CPU cores for Linux? And in order to answer this question, we need to understand the memcached performance. In this graph, you can see the throughput of running memcached on five CPU cores. And on the right, you can see the throughput of running links on, of running MemcacheD on six CPU cores. And as you can see, MemcacheD scales linearly when adding more CPU cores. Now we will use five CPU cores with Bluefield. And it looks like that with Bluefield, we can achieve better uh, throughput. But if we look at the latency, you will see that when using Bluefield, the latency is much, much higher, higher than using six uh, CPU cores. And this is because Bluefield, Bluefield has ARM cores, which are slower than the Xeon core. Therefore, for MemcacheD, using six CPU cores is, is much better for the performance. And as a takeaway, links on Bluefield may achieve higher system efficiency compared to using Bluefield for standard server workloads. Now I will move to conclusions. So our main takeaway is that SmartNICs offer a viable alternative to the host, to the host CPU for driving compute-bound accelerated network servers. And as a result, accelerated servers can run with zero, with zero CPU utilization. Thanks.